This is the If More Let's Divide podcast. Yo, Charlie, guys, what's popping? Welcome to the If More Let's Divide podcast. And we are here with Full Vim, our vision clear, our mind on point, razor sharp, you know, thoughts. And Charlie, we hope you enjoy this episode. Charlie Fred, what did happen? <coughs> the way your energy be. Yeah. You're on Charlie. point today, so mm. I, I will follow him. I yeah. will follow our base, bro. What's good? Charlie. With the pan, you have to position the mic well. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I've been working with it, but yeah, yeah it'll be Charlie, good now. Charlie, another episode is upon us. Um, so far, how do you see season five? Charlie, it's, 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 it's interesting. It's, yeah, it, it, it it's, kick it's off well. Yeah, kick some, off some lively, you know, interviews, amazing guests. And Charlie, like we have always done, we will keep on bringing you awesomeness. Like our guest today... Mm-hmm. Who and and I think there, there's a like second guest who like I don't know at all. Okay. Yeah, I think the first was Kim. Okay. Yeah, who you brought and mm-hmm. and this I, I I know the brand. I've been following the brand. You know his bro is is a, is a friend of mine. Okay. And I've been following the brand for years and I'm like, why don't we get these guys on? Because they are doing amazingly well and yeah. also in the di- in, in the, the those episode we mentioned yeah. them. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Charlie, um I'm I'm looking forward to discover more about the brand, about Absolutely. the people behind it, about the intention and Charlie guys, we know that you are going to love this episode. So help us welcome Nana Boating or say from Boating. Yes, sir. <laughs> Nana. What's popping, man? Charlie, How you cool, cool, cool. Charlie, we are happy to have you here. Finally, finally. Um, after you know a few days of speaking, trying to schedule things, we are elated and we appreciate you for coming through the podcast, the If More Let's Divide podcast. Yeah, man. No worries, mm. man. I'm happy, happy to be here. This yeah, is the yeah. first interview I'm doing in over a year. So. Oh wow. Why? Yeah. <laughs> um after a while you, you just stopped you just stop doing interviews. There's you, you get busy with like yeah. the thick of, of the the business, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Or, or or maybe maybe because you have reached like your 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 height, your pinnacle. So you're like, let, uh, let me def- cool. We definitely we definitely haven't <laughs> reached our pinnacles yet. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so um mm-hmm. I mean your your brand is 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 one that I've followed for a while. Like I see your stuff, you know, and I know know your bro. Any any time he's rocking one, mm-hmm. and after a while, I realized that you guys it was made from wood. Right. That that was many years ago, about six years ago. I'm like, oh wow, this is sick and dope. And right. you know, since that time, I've been very, very curious, like as to why, the what, you know, what goes into it. Because this is the first brand that I know of, you know, like like you guys, you using wood to 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 you know do do your frames. So Charlie, that's dope. Fred has so many things to ask because <laughs> in uh, in an episode. Um, um, Fred and our guest, they spoke quite extensively about your brand, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Bolton. Is it Bolton? Yeah, it's Bolton. Bolton. Just like you said it. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 where yeah. do you get, get, get a name from? So, the the story is it was originally supposed to be Boating, because Boating is my, my middle name. Okay. But then when, when we started doing the trademarks, we realized that Oswald Boating had all the trademarks. Oh. For, for most industries in North America, right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, what can we do that is more of a reflection of, of, of me? Yeah, but my, my, so the reason why I wanted to make a button, because yeah. it was supposed to be a reflection of my, my, val- my ideals and my values. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Nana K came up with, with a flip, which was Bolton with Bolton. the yeah. accent on the top. Yeah. Oh, and okay. it just rolled off the tongue. Bolton. Better. Yeah. Yeah. But that's 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 the base. It sounds like some bow. Yeah. Yeah. And David Bolton. Yeah. 
It's got a yeah. ring to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Got a ring yeah. To it. Wow! Shouts to o- o- Oswald. Um, one time I, I was I was walking somewhere in in, in the UK, L- London somewhere, mm-hmm. and I saw him walk past calmly. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that, that that's you know that's the guy. That's you know, the Godfather. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Godfather. Yeah. Um, Charlie. Yeah. Um, so why frames? Because bow boating could have been anything else. So why frames? Yeah, so if, if I'm gonna, if I mean, we got an hour and a half, so if I'm, if I'm mm-hmm. gonna take it all the way back, so. We want you to. <laughs> so Boatsim wasn't actually my first um, eyewear company. Mm. Um, about six to eight months before, I launched a company with one, one of my friends. So, mm-hmm. so by the way, like it was launched in Canada originally, oh, okay. right? Um, but before Boatsim, about six to eight months before, I, I launched a, a brand with one of my friends at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not going to mention the name, yeah. it doesn't matter, but, um, and the concept of wooden sunglasses, mm-hmm. ha- it's been done before. I'm, no, I'm not okay. going to say that we invented wooden, mm. wooden sunglasses. It, it had been done before, but I like the idea because of the fact that um, it built on being, a- being able to cater to your environment with, with the materials you use yeah. for, for, for your fashion and, and what yeah. you wear. Yeah. You know, um, but so the, the first company took off really fast. Like it was, it was about five to six months. We mm-hmm. did a lot of fashion shows. Um, we had audition to be on the TV show. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know if you heard of Dragons. Then it's in the UK. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Dragons, so so yeah. in Canada, you know. Um, but then it it got to a point where um, I realized that we weren't aligned in in terms of our values. Mm-hmm. And like when you, when you go into business or so on, you always gotta to make sure that you guys are on the same wavelength, right? Because I mean, that's what hap- that, that's what happens over time. When things yeah. get successful, yeah. people show the real characters, mm-hmm. right? So, um, so we had a split about eight months in, mm-hmm. and then I partnered with with Nana, my brother, Yo, bro. and and my sister to to launch Bolton. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wear at 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 that time was an expression of of. Uh, our original slogan, which was vision of change. So it kind of really went, came back to um, being able to use uh, discarded and sustainable materials mm. to make eyewear, but specifically in, in developing communities, right? So, mm. so Ghana was, is one of the places that exports a lot of uh, wood material across the world, yeah. specifically to China. China is the biggest Oh wow! Um, Didn't know. Exporter for for all different kinds of wood. Like yeah, Ooh. they go to Volta Volta region a lot. Oh. Um, and the companies are the companies that have you know have contracts to harvest this wood and export it. So mm. it doesn't it doesn't get processed at all. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's I mean so I mean the idea of reusing materials was where the the original idea of boats yeah. came yeah. around. You know, so for for a lot of years we were kind of in our own lane. We weren't really specifically in fa- in the fashion industry or in the optical. We were just kind of because we had built our, our own e-commerce uh, platform, platform. Yeah. Um, and that you know we had that that was really where our community kind of started. You mm. know, outside before we got into retail stores. So, um, but over time we realized that there was actually a, a need. It wasn't just about the materials that you use, but yeah. also how the, how are you impacting your yeah. your communities and what, what are the yeah. needs of your communities versus the the wants of looking good, yeah. which 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 they 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 both come together um, if you do it right. But at that time, we we're more we we're more about the style and the fashion and the use of sustainable materials, and not mm-hmm. so much about like um, how do you impact the impact um, and take care of communities yeah. from an eye care s- standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that, so I would say that like the idea ca- has kind of evolved over time, but it's always been around like um, really taking care of the environment and also figuring out how, how to empower people around you. Um, yeah. Dope, dope, yeah. dope, dope. That's, that's, that's quite extensive. Um, um, just to 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 pick up on on something that you said, mm-hmm. how does it feel being in business with your siblings? Oh, it's it's been a blessing. It's mm. been a blessing. Um, 
because like we all have skill sets that com complement each other mm. and that's that's really helped a lot you know um i uh i come from a family where like my my brother and one of my sisters mm -hmm. mimi's they're all create we're all creative so oh, okay. it's kind of natural to kind of just get in a room and just kind of brainstorm on like whether it's design or or visionary things yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It, it, we're all kind of in our in our natural element yeah when, we, when we're doing that you, you said creatives you, you guys were uh, uh all creatives um i want to ask you like mm -hmm. like what did you do you know create creatively me, be, uh, me yeah, myself yeah you yourself before getting into into into, into this into, into eyewear or? yeah 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 I, I wear. um yeah so like before before getting into like any product related yeah, uh, businesses yeah. i i used to run um how do you I, i'll call them expedition mm. trips where oh, okay or tour trips tour, uh, tours, this was yeah. this was in canada where we would would take people from you know ottawa to montreal or mm. ottawa to new york and and basically the whole idea was to build a unique experience but my my major being environmental science no oh, okay I, I always would try and find ways to incorporate like sustainable living um or sustainable consumption at at, at the time yeah. so we would partner up so basically what i started doing is um I'll f figure out like okay, so who, who what are people doing that's actually actually sustainable? Yeah. And then I'll find like organic wine companies, organic vodka companies, and then yeah. we would do these like special events with them where we're promoting the brands, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I did that for about like a couple a couple of years, and then. I got into a different industry, but mm. uh, do, do you know Vertical Gardens? No, no. So they're like hydroponic vertical gardens mm. where you can grow um, crops. Oh, okay. Basically without, without any soil. Without, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, wow. But, you know, people use them for aesthetic value too. Mm. So people in hotels will have like a, a green wall, mm. right? So I did, that, I did that as well for a bit. Um, before kind of landing onto Bolton. But outside of all this, I've also worked with uh, some of the, um, some of the um, Fortune 500 companies in terms mm -hmm. of um, on the experiential marketing side as oh, well. So sick. I've kind of had a, a rounded experience when it comes to, um, I'll say overall marketing, but also brand, brand building. Okay, okay, Frey. Hey. What's up? How are you, man? I'm, Welcome. I'm good, I'm good, man. How, how um, how you how you how you feeling? Not bad at all. I followed your brand for a long. I think since inception, because there was a time where I was fantasizing about doing fashion on some level right. as a creative, and mm -hmm. I was trying to do something different mm -hmm. with glasses as well. And I had a similar idea to yours. I was like, I can make glasses out of wood. So I started researching. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if I imagine something, I I go first to search if somebody else doing it. Mm -hmm. I did do it at a high level. And then I came across the brand. It was in Canada at the time. I was like, oh, shit. They're Ghanaian and they're doing it and they're doing it at an extremely high level. So it kind of like killed that idea for me personally. But I was excited to see the quality that you guys were presenting and all of that. But when I read your bio, um, the companies about us, mm -hmm. there seems to be a heightened awareness of social consciousness, doing something to to try and tie the brand to something more substantive, something more meaningful, whether it's ancestry, whether it's forefathers, whether it's the region, you know, or Africa in general, or being socially responsible and all of that. Where, where does that come from? Um, like I was, I'm, I was, I mentioned earlier, um, I was an environmental science and studies major, so okay. I, I I learned a lot about the social economic um, impact of us human beings on the environment. Of course, in Ghana, it's a little bit different because I don't think that as it's not as valued as much as you know in other places. But I think you know that can, that that whole idea of being socially conscious, um, even for me, from because I mean I've been doing this for you know, almost 10 years, 10, 10 plus years. The ideas evolved, I'll, I'll say, because 
being socially conscious, like, you know, consuming um, all natural and all that, that that's great for, for, you, for your, your body, it's great for you. But there's yeah. also the, the lack, right? So like, if you want to get like, I don't know, organic milk, it's going to cost you like mm. three times the amount that, yeah. um, you know, regular milk, would, would, you, you would pay for regular milk. Yeah. And so how many people can actually afford that lifestyle, right? So that's, to me, the, the, the bigger issue is how do, you, how, do you empower, how do you empower communities economically? Because if you can do that, then you can, um, you can bring awareness and education um, that can change people's lives um, versus just saying, putting a stamp on something and saying it's eco-friendly. Mm. And that's only for the select few people who have the, the means to, to live that life. So mm. I think there's, there's flaws in the idea of being socially conscious. I think I, the idea has to be challenge, challenged a little bit. Great. So is that, is that what the company, is that what Booting is trying to do, is push the yeah, envelope? Yeah, or? yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of, a lot of our social, um, pr the social programs that we've done reflect that. Um, like we went, like just to name a few, like we've done a few tree, tree plants initiatives in Kenya and also the Northern region. We've also, we partnered with, partnered with Jack and Jill to do eye screenings. Even right now, we're offering complimentary eye exams for anybody who walks into our showrooms, right? So like, oh. I mean, eye care is a, you know, is a big part of um, a healthy functioning society, you know? And there's a huge correlation between people who don't have good eye care and and also um poverty right so mm. i th so i mean i don't think that gets talked about enough that there is a gap there's a economic gap okay that keeps people having the same lifestyle right mm. makes sense i'm with you yeah 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 um but when you so did you move the operation from Canada to Ghana now, or you're in both places? So actually, right now, as 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 things stand, we have a we have offices in New York and a warehouse in New York. Okay. And then we have offices over here, and, and as well as a warehouse here. So we we don't have any operations in Canada at the moment. We okay. moved most of our operations to New York because um, it was closer to like our suppliers and and, and our customers as well. Mm. Yeah. Because looking at you, I mean, I don't know if you've heard this before, but mm -hmm. you you could come off as a possible nerd, right? Like somebody mm -hmm. who's studious, but your glasses also says something completely different. Like as this a super cool guy <laughs> who's like you know aware of the times and you know could find them on any cool street anywhere in the universe. You might blend in, fit in. Um, I'm trying to understand. Do you? Because to scale a company mm -hmm. and take it where you've taken yours from infancy to where you've taken it, it requires a lot of competency, grit, there to be that kind of executive, so on and so forth. And it's not spoken about enough because if you're doing things like, you know, making glasses, people think, oh, it's just being cool. But, you know, behind the scenes, there's a lot that goes into scaling any company on any level if you ever built any company. I'm just trying to understand what your background is and what informs those, that duality of usually cool guys are not associated with nerdiness or intelligence to that level. But you, it sounds to me as though you've been able to marry the two and straddle that line. Or if, do you see yourself in the light that I'm describing? Um, I, 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 I was definitely a lot more of a social, socialite, you know, just in university and... That's just my personality. I'm, I'm, I've always been a lot more outgoing, but I think, I think since COVID, I've, I've turned into a nerd a little bit. <laughs> you know, you, you're more indoor guy now. Uh, well, yeah. I now I, I start my own family. Um, oh, congratulations! And you know, it's a different life, right? Um, so I can still be in that world, and you and no matter whether you're a nerd or not, you got to learn to to network and meet people. But also, on the flip side, people who are outgoing also need to learn to like settle down, and and uh, you know, look oversee the admin or 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 delegate that aspect of of 
the business. I would say that, to be honest, uh, that aspect of the business is a lot more important, right? Because, like, so, like, they say hype doesn't pay bills. And the idea behind that is that you can, you can have, you know, a $100,000 marketing budget to, to this push, whatever you want to push, but your logistics and your efficiency behind the scenes, mm -hmm. if it's not on point, um, you, you, you kind of miss a lot of opportunities. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And you see that with a lot of companies that raise money is that for, for whatever reason, the moment they start raising money, efficiency is kind of out the window because they're just confident that they're going to get the next round of money or whatever the projections are, right? So um, I think, like, yeah, for me, I, I definitely was a lot more on the this cool guy, um, not, not necessarily just, or like I'm trying to do something that's cool, um, but something that I, I, I believe in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't really the numbers guy, but un until I, it got to a point where I was forced to become that person. And once you, once you become that person, um, you're, you're always gonna be that person, but you can also switch whenever you need to, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, every, per every person who runs a business is gonna need to understand enough of the, the back end to be successful, right? You, you, of course, you're gonna delegate it, but if you leave it to someone else to handle everything, you might get robbed, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm with you, I'm with yeah. you. Dope, dope. Yeah. Um, so um, mm -hmm. still, still, um, and I'm going to ask this now because Fred just made, made mention of it. So I was mm -hmm. going through your website. Um, your website. I remember going through it some mm -hmm. years ago, um, but just for the purpose of this interview, I was like, let me just go through. And on your, on your, the page where you have the, the contacts, right? Mm -hmm. You know, seeing New York, I was seeing everywhere, and there was no G -G Ghana, Ghana, like there was no Ghana. But I went contact yeah, yeah, contact yeah, number yeah the con the contacts like you know the, your your page for 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 the contacts okay yeah there was no Ghana but I went to this other page where you know you could find a place to buy mm -hmm. and you had to from Ghana um, go cows and and one other place I had the lot yeah yeah the, yeah the lot but yeah you know in 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 like North America so many you know. So many spots and, and, and all that. Mm -hmm. I, I, want, I want to ask, why is Ghana not heavy on, on your site? <laughs> Are you, re you ready for it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> they, don't, they don't invest in, in products. Mm -hmm. they, they try and have the cake and eat it. And any brand that is trying to push the envelope can't always be, do, be doing consignment for stores. Right? Yeah. They're the same people who go outside and will, will invest money in, they go to Paris Fashion Week and all these places. Uh, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. You know? yeah. So, I mean, for, for us, we're just like, um, we've done it and we do have partners that, you know, we want to continue to grow with. But the, the Ghana retail uh, model of consignment for brands is a win lose. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, I I I, uh, I advise anyone who's 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 in that market to find a way to get your direct distribution, right? Yeah, yeah. So that you're not dependent on anyone to to grow. Yeah. So so like, how are you doing that? And also, just to back this question up, maybe to like help uh, help help you answer. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. You are working with so many uh, amazing people. Um, who's that, that guy? Kim Promise? Yes, yes, yes. Kim Promise. I think for his video shoot, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was supporting your your brand. I've seen Hansen Akati, you know, on your Instagram. Akotoa, you know, on your Instagram. And so many dope, dope people. Is that how you are trying to push your stuff here in Ghana? Yeah, I mean, for us, like, we want to just build great, great relationships with people. Um, We've done a lot of gifting over the years on all, on all levels. And I think over time, I just realized that um, at the end of the day, it's not just about, okay, you're gifting someone who's famous and you're happy about that, but you wanna, you wanna build a relationship because yeah. um, you never know where, where it will take. Mm, take. Mm. So like now, all our giftings, we try and do it organically. Like if we don't have a rep over there, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mm. do it, you know? And, and, We've seen better results 
by doing it that way, you know, yeah, yeah. continue to build relationships with every everybody that you that you work with. Okay. So so now that we know about Ghana, how your brand is doing here, yeah. how is it doing in the West? Um, I'll be honest. We had a we had a, we had a tough year last year. Mm. Um, specifically when it came to um, supply. Uh, so Boatson had about sixty retail stores that we were supplying worldwide. At after um, summer of twenty twenty three. It, it jumped to 120. Oh, wow. Um, and I mean, on papers, it's a great thing, but the challenge has been being able to fulfill um, orders on time for all our distribution, you know, because we also have our, our website. We have a, like a loyal base for people who mm -hmm. buy over there. And then we have our, you know, our wholesalers, yeah. you know, and then now, now we also are, are sell. obviously we're selling Ghana, but now we're also selling out of our new, uh, offices out of uh, Sun City. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that's that's been a challenge, an ongoing challenge. Um, but it's 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 a good problem to have because at least we know that people, you know, like the direction of where we're going with, with yeah. our glasses. And I, and I mean, this this is specifically with like. So obviously we have our wood frames, but we also launched our acetate collection mm. in 2022. And I mean, it's consistently seen. Um, a lot of people sought after them, so we're happy. We're happy about that. But like, um, so because of that, we we slowed down on the distribution in, in North America, um, and we're just really trying to work uh, closer with the stores that we have, right? And figuring out which of the stores are fit um, in the long term, mm. um, because there's 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 so many ways to. to scale right so you got to figure out like what is the best strategy right yeah. um i know a lot of people who've scaled up to like a thousand retail partners but managing that is it becomes a challenge right um especially if they're first time buyers or or whatever right so yeah. so yeah i mean i would say um it's progressing. We've, we we run into challenges last year, but this year we focus on product development first, and not um, and not partnerships. Like I, I will also say that um, sometimes when it comes to like um, opportunities that arise, um, you kind of have to just take your time, right? Mm. Because you might uh, you might en enter a partnership that you're just not ready ready for at the time. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're just trying to focus on the core. We've, we, we've been able to, you know, build a lot of great partnerships, but ultimately we're running a business and, and, and we want to impact people's lives more than do these uh, partnerships true, true, firsthand. True. Well, yeah, right. Uh, uh, it will be safe to say you're wearing your own glasses. Yes, yeah. yes. What, what model is this? Is this is it part of a new... Yeah, so this is part. Of, this is part of our icon icon series. It's okay. it's our latest uh, collection that we we just launched. Part of what uh, King Promise and mm -hmm. Sapphire were wearing for yeah, the yeah. the mu uh, music video. Um, it's it's uh, first time we were experimenting with four millimeter acetate. Usually it's uh, two millimeter, but this one's a, a lot thicker. Um, the, the, we we've seen a lot of great um, response from it so far. Um, are and they available here in the Sun City? So Show. we sold out. We sold out in Ghana a couple okay. weeks. Well, we sold out everywhere a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. Um, but we'll, but when they restock, they'll be they'll be available there. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, that's where we're doing the free eye exam for mm. complimentary eye exam for every appointment. Gotcha. So Mutombo was talking to you about the success. You know how you're doing in Ghana, how you're doing in the West, and I want to get a bit more into the kind of information that young aspiring entrepreneurs would learn? Were there any landmark like at achievements? You've been in business for a while now. That mm -hmm. What moments do, can you look back on and say, oh, I, I, we were projecting to hit this landmark or this, you know, specific achievement. We, we checked that off that box. And then, you know, from beginning till about now, what are those moments that have made you like say, oh, this is, this is all worth it from a business standpoint? Like you feel like 
you know, you're cutting your teeth, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do, and you feel like your trajectory is heading towards playing with the big boys, basically, if that's the ultimate goal, like, you know, what those specific moments were for you, and if you had set those goals prior to? Yeah, so, I mean, I would say the first one was, came in 2020 when, when we, we partnered up with our first um, investment company, um, Mazizi. And because, uh, I mean, for a while we had kind of, we had, we had kind of gotten to a point where we were at peace with growing organically, but the fact that we had found a partner that would help us strategically build. Um, and if, if I look at where we were before they came on board to where we are right now, I mean, there's a lot that we, we got done in the last four years. Um, mm. if, it feels like, it felt, it felt like the last four years felt like 10 years, to be honest. Um, so that, that um, also, I would say, um, another, another milestone was definitely a lot of the corporate partnerships that we did. Um, between 2020 and now, so so far we've done um, HB one of HBO for Lovecraft Country. We did um, Paramount Paramount uh, Paramount Global for the Cannes Festival mm -hmm. a couple years back. Obviously, we the recent one of Disney for Wakanda Forever. Oh, dope! And then uh, more recently, one of YouTube that YouTube for uh event that will happen in ghana so i mean like that in terms of our ability to execute those kind of partners because these are high pressure these are high pressure deals right where like really you know ne they never give you enough time mm. but you have to deliver right, right. On, on 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 a from, from a quality standpoint you know the fact that we were able to do it shows me that from a production standpoint we are at a certain point that we can um we can execute, you know, uh, under pressure. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll say the last one would be our move into acetate because, I mean, we've, we've been known for wood for a while. Mm -hmm. And though our move, to, our move into acetate kind of um, signaled our, our introduction into the optical industry, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Bolton is, I think the biggest difference is Bolton is now officially in the optical industry. Um, we did we did Vision Expo last year um, in New York, which was the, the biggest um, eyewear trade show in the world. And I mean, the response was amazing. And we didn't do it this year, but I was hearing that a lot of people were like, "Yo, where's where's Bolton?" Mm -hmm. Right? They wanted more. Right? Mm -hmm. I just um, so I mean, all these things to me show that there's been maturity. In the, in the brand and, and business, um, so I think I think I, we're on on the tip to to greater things because the biggest challenge of most most businesses is how do you self sustain when you when you're scaling up? And I've seen business small and big go out of business, especially in the last year year and a half, because mm -hmm. you know they end up taking on debt that they can't pay off, yeah. right? Um, so, I mean, I would, one of the things that I definitely try and preach, I mean, I, the, the dream for most entrepreneurs is you wanna raise money um, and with that investment, scale it to a certain point, right? To the point where you, you, know, you get a, a great offer to buy out, right? Yeah. Let's just say. Um, and if you can, be self-sustained, you know, and I, 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 it's, it's not easy to do, but if you can be self-sustained, there's, um, there's a lot more leverage you have when you walk into those dues, mm. in, in, into those rooms, mm -hmm. right? Because um, what happens a lot of times is that um, because a lot of companies come to the table desperate for cash. Yeah. They, you know, they take they take win lose deals, yeah. and that has been the end of a lot of businesses. Yeah, it, it would be good at some point if you expand on that phrase. You, you've used it a couple of times: win lose, win lose. Uh -huh. But what I I want to ask you before I'm sure Mutobo has a follow up question on that is: 
Bef when you started this brand, mm -hmm. I'm sure you walked in to the industry with some sort of a chip on the shoulder. When I read about us, the bio kind of representing something. We come from something. It's like some pride there. I, I want to know from your perspective, if there was any, you know, ideas in the back of your mind of prejudices, being overlooked, being a, 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 a black kid from with Ghanaian roots, thinking that, okay, these people probably don't think I, I'm capable and I'm going to show them. Was there any type of chip like that on your shoulder? And if there wasn't, what have you, how have you evolved as a leader and a, an executive? Mm -hmm. As you sit here right now with all the knowledge that you have, have you made any observations that maybe eliminate those preconceived notions about what the industry is about and the color of your skin? Or have you confirmed them to say, you know what, I'm just as good, but they still overlook or that those things don't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what you have acquired in that span as a leader and how you represent and lead your people now. Like what kind of executive do you see yourself as? Um, at different points, I would say that Bolton has definitely had a chip on his, on his shoulder, but it's not something that affected the way we moved. And, and what, what I mean by that is that um, there's always, like in life, there's always going to be someone who's, who tells you that, oh, like, whatever you're, whatever you're doing is, is not going to be successful. Um, and that's kind of like a fear that you, you kind of have to face because if, if people have control, you know, a lot of times people don't want to, people don't tell people what they're up to until it gets to a certain point because they don't want people bringing, you know, bad karma or whatever mm -hmm. on the ideas. Um, I think overall you kind of have to accept that, um, the, you, you, you are going to be doubted by people, um, and you're not doing it to, if, if you're, if you're, if you're doing whatever you're doing to prove people wrong, then you're not kind of, you're not using that energy in the right way. I think at the end of the day, like, um, before anything was set, set in stone, you, you knew that, you already knew what you were, you were going to do and why you were going to do it. Um, so I think the biggest thing for, for me is um, being able to be a kingmaker and being able to empower my team. Uh, because in a lot of rooms you go to, you're made to feel like, oh, you, you don't have as much experience as the next person, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're a smaller company or, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't be part of this conversation. But Bolton has, Bolton has been fortunate because, the, I mean, the, the reality is those, those that self-doubt doesn't always come from other people. Sometimes it comes from your own people, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. sometimes the people that you, you expect to be supporting you are the ones who are doubting you behind your back. So it's just part of it is part of the game and you, you have to just accept that um, people will um, try and, and push you back sometimes. Um, but if you surround yourself with the, with the right people, right, um, and you empower the people that you have around, um, I think you'll be fine. Mm. But I'm not someone who's like, vendetta driven where it's just like oh this person said that Bolton's going to zero no mm. i'm i'm more so like i'm i'm more of an optimist who wants to make things inevitable right so like yeah you can you can be goal orient oriented but how do you make this outcome um happen no matter what you do right like what are the steps that you take and as as long as you know um what steps you need to take to, to get to that point, then it's not, it's not really about someone, you, you just don't put your life in anybody's hands, right? So like I personally kind of, 
I, I, I kind of grew up understanding that um, not just from Bolton, but from other companies that I had run before, um, you can't really depend on anybody, right? So instead of always having to depend on someone, figure out how you can um, build something that works for you. Should I go? Yeah. yeah. So, so earlier on, you made mention of some top, you know, placements that you've had, you know, from YouTube, Wakanda. Um, yeah, you made mention of a few Kim Promise, you know, and all that. Um, I, I want to know how do you decide that you want to work with this person or this brand or whatever? Like, do you have some criteria that you follow, or you just? go off the whim, okay, this guy has reach, um, let us work with him, or like, how do you decide? How, uh, how, how do you pick people that, that you, you, you want to work with? Um, so we, we, t we typically, well, in terms of like personalities, mm. we have our crit criteria, you know, uh, we typically find out, number one, is it, is it someone who loves eyewear, eyewear right? Yeah. The, um, yeah. Number two, are they someone that, is big on community building because that's mm. that's a huge one for us. Um, but outside of that, um, the other criteria in terms of like is it a fit for the brand? Um, like if it's a if it's corporate, it might be more about like is this opportunity gonna put the brand in in, in the best possible light? You know. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of little metrics that you uh, you can go around. But I mean, to be honest, like um, we've done a lot of of um, due diligence when it, when it comes to working with influencers. And I still feel, feel like the, the best approach is how do you, you know, how do you vibe with the person? Yeah. You know, is, is, there, is there a vibe that you can build on, you know, um, and are they accessible? Because a lot of these people end up not being accessible, but if mm -hmm. they are accessible, um, then th they clearly want to work with you. Um, I think it also depends on, how things developed. Is it something where you're chasing the company or, or the artist to work with them? Or mm. is, is, is the interest mutual? Yeah, mutual. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Dope, dope. Um, so I, I've seen your frames, like, they are dope, like different. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into eyewear. Mm -hmm. I, I just have two sunglasses. Should I call them some? Yeah, mm -hmm. which, which, which I bought some years, years ago. And that's all I've had. Um, quite recently, I've been asked to wear prescribed, you know, glasses, you know, glasses because I can't see well. <laughs> well, yeah. now I can't see the screen. First time, first time getting your eye exam, or <laughs> Fred, <laughs> are you supposed to? <laughs> yeah, this one is prescription. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I never knew. Well, I, this I is bifocal. Mm. So after a while, I had to admit it because I was not seeing anything. Yeah, reading was becoming a challenge. So this is purely for reading, but. The first, not to give you a long story, but the first day I, I picked them up, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I got into three car accidents, same day. What? In a span of, because everything became so big in front no. of me that I was like, instead of taking the curve like quicker, I'll be getting so close, I'm like, ah, what's going on? And mm. then I scraped, scraped, scraped. I took the glasses off for the longest time. So I only wear when I'm reading. Mm. I don't wear to drive or nothing. Because it um, changed. It, the, these are bifocals or progressives that you're wearing? I think they're bifocals. That's bifocal. what he said to me. But in Ghana, you never know. I, I don't have that a lot of experience. <laughs> trust, trust, your people. <laughs> trust your people. Yeah, but the, the, whoever, like, I went to a credible place. They sent me there. And then they said it was bifocals. You can check them out if you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, these days people use uh, progressives because okay. you can have the reading and the sight together. But, but bifocals mm. mainly for, for reading. For reading, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So. That's, I mean, I just, we just did a pair of lenses for a lady. People are afraid to do progressives in Ghana and even bifocal sometimes. So sometimes they, they fly all the way to the US or, where, or wherever else to get it done. And I'm like, well, you know, there's, there's an opportunity to get it done over here. It's just about, you know, making sure that like the process is like a, a good experience, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Cause if, if, if it's like, I don't know, if it's not a good experience, then it it, it leaves a stigma, mm. right? Yeah, but but Nana, I, I'm afraid that it's it's cheaper getting them them done in the states. Cause I was going to do it, and a friend of mine told me to wait. 
or when, when I go to the States. That's then, not necessarily true. Yeah, there's, really. There's, there's a lot of, it depends on the market, but mm. traditionally the Iowa market has like, let's just say 500 to 1,000% yeah. markup on the frames mm. and the lenses. So people spend 500 to $1,000 at a time at an optical store. Mm. So what's happened is there's a, there's a lot more optical brands that are online that are basically mm. disruptors, like, like, you know, like Wabi Parker, uh, Clearly, and a, b a bunch of others. Mm. So you can, get a, you, you can get it online over there for cheaper, but it's not the same experience. And, you know, for the most part, people stick to like single vision when it comes to online. They don't, mm. to, they don't do progressives as much because, I mean, we're, we're progressive by focal. You have to measure um, your, your seg height and, mm. and your PD mm. uh, to make sure it's accurate. So, yeah, oh, okay. No. Yeah. But yeah. you asked him previously about frames before I went into this bifocal yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh. You were asking about, you've seen his frames, they're dope. Yeah, I was leading. Yes, yes. Oh, right, yeah, you were saying yeah, you, yeah, needed, you yeah. needed a new pair of glasses. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, the, the question that, that I wanted to ask was um, your frames, and I'm, and I'm talking about your wooden frames. I am um, your 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 frames made of wood. Right. I saw that you guys source your wood from Ghana. Um, certain species are, are sourced oh, okay, from Ghana. Okay, yes. okay, And then you take them to Japan or something. Or, yeah. Or, or so the, or, or the, or that story has changed. So, so right now we're working with um, an Italian manufacturer. Mm. Um, we were working with a Japanese manufacturer before. And then also a, a Chinese one. So what would happen is with a Japanese manufacturer, we would import um, the some of the material to the the warehouse. But they also source it themselves. So if you say you want ebony wood, um, they can source it directly f um, from mm. the continent for you. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So but we still we still have, uh, and then there's also Wenge, which is one of one of the more recent. Uh, it looks like ebony, but it, it has kind of lines in between. Uh, Wenge, Wenge is something that's mm. uh, really popular. Is ebony with the one that changes from brown to black over time? Yeah, yeah. There's certain there's certain species that do, that. Okay. Uh, it's mm. probably the most 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 uh, worn in terms of wood frames. The okay. most exotic of, of them. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, are, are there people in the world? Yes. Now my question: Are there people in the world? Who shouldn't wear wear frames? Like, is there anyone? Because for me, for example, people say I like you know sunglasses fit me a whole lot. Do you think you know it's the same with every human being, or there are some people who can never ever wear frames? It, it, it's like it, it's it's like some some t type of shirt. Mm -hmm. I, I can't wear tight you know shirts because I'm not muscular. I have a big tummy, you know, quote unquote. I'm not saying I have a, I have a big big tummy, but you know, some some people shouldn't wear tight jeans, you know, some some kind of shoes. Do you think there are there's, people? There's a certain f the, the the f certain face shapes that can't fit most glasses that are available, yeah. right? So there's certain people who struggle finding glasses that fit the face yeah. well. Yeah. And actually, that's one of the solutions that we've come up with in terms of uh, having a. A, a blueprint of gl glasses that have a wider temple, um, mm. wi wider bridge, yeah. but also temple, but also um, complements your, your your skin tone better. Mm. So, I mean, a lot of our customers are people who say they most of the glasses don't fit their faces, but then when they try our, our glasses and, and they see how well the nose profile fits mm. on, on the face, yeah, it, it becomes yeah. a, a different story. Yeah. So the reason why, why, why I ask you this question is like, are there, do you provide services for, do you do cust customized frames where I can come in and you guys would take me to a room where there are some computers and all that, measure my frame, um, 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 the size of my head, my, my eye and all that, and get me frames that would be mine? Um. The short answer is we don't do that commercially, mm. Mm. but we can. Okay. So if you say, we've done it before, right? Mm. So if, if you say, okay, I want a pair of glasses that 
um, fits my face perfectly and you want your face to be sca scanned yeah, or, yeah. or measured um, and then you, you show us exactly the, the sizing that you want, right? Because you, you should know like, okay, what kind of sizing do I want for the lenses? We can yeah. put all, all that together and get you a customized pair. It would, it would definitely cost a lot more, but you would get something that is literally one, one for one. Yeah, dope, dope, dope. Oh. Then, then, then I think I'll go go for that. That's a, that sounds like a fun thing to do. You yeah. Know, when you have a little bit of cash, it might be. I'm, I myself, I'm thinking about it. I haven't. I feel like I have a broad face. Yeah, you do. And white, white, Meat. and it's very. Meat. Yeah. I, so I'm always looking for low. Yeah. I think the your the the bridge for your for your frames is too small for your nose. Okay. So it's kind of pinching pinching yeah. your 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 nose a little bit. Yeah. So when you when you have some new frames, I'll, I'll definitely pop into the Sun City to get some new. Yeah, 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 for new, sure. Uh, for sure frames. For I sure. love the thickness of it. I love the the look of it, uh, the coolness of it. Yeah, we That's, actually have something that is not similar, but it's it's around. I you you would like it. I okay. don't want to. I don't want to give it away. Okay. Mm. But oh, it's, it's yet to come out. No, it's it's out. It's one of the glasses. It's called the Aya the Aya Aviator. It's was out. it the one that Ken promised? Yeah, it's the one that Ken promised was yeah, rocking. Yeah, they, yeah. Dope. They, they have dope. them in like navy blue and yeah, green. Very, very dope. Very, very oh, I'll have to go and check it out then for sure. I yeah. need them. Um, yeah. I'm a bit of a inquisitive person in this. So I'm going to take you back to your role as an executive in, in mm -hmm. the company. Um, you, you've talked about different aspects of the business. But I'm also trying to understand your 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 decision making in terms of like you're looking for growth. You're you've talked about getting into rooms and having leverage. Um, you've talked about not taking the money too soon or putting yourself in a position where you're compromised. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's a whole lot of things that happen behind the scenes for you to be able to, you know, be the captain of a ship. You're trying to navigate maintain longevity, relevance, and all of that. What do you, if any, anything at all, what kind of source material do you use to study if you do that? Or how do you self-improve? Because I'm assuming, or I'm, I'm realizing as a leader, most of the people behind are just simply relying on you to lead the way. Wherever you draw inspiration from, no one really puts any effort into you. You have to kind of go find inspiration from others, and then pour into your people. So I'm trying to understand over the years how you've kept yourself sharp on the edge of your industry, knowing that you're walking into rooms where you're being underestimated. So you have to read widely. You have to understand your industry, the numbers, the jargon, the, everything that goes into being part of that industry and for you to feel competent enough to like, you know, operate in the shoes that you're in. How do you keep yourself sharp? Yeah, I mean, I would say two things. I would say one of them is just prayer, because like a lot of times, um, you have a lot of people in your ear telling you different things. People are pushing you left and right, and you need to ha you need you need to be able to have a source of calm and peace at a lot of critical times, right? There are a lot of things that. Um, like basically, you can't be shaken up by anything, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, um, definitely having quiet time and, and praying a lot has, has helped tremendously um, in terms of just being poised and, and that is definitely a source of my confidence. Um, and the other thing which is kind of connected is, um, so you can get overwhelmed by the amount of information that you're receiving from all over. So I tend to have a, a more of an internal um, source of um, reference versus external, right? Because there's always something happening. There's always something to something to study or or, or competitor to to watch or whatever. Um, and I, and def I I I definitely try and keep um, you know. Keep things internal, and and not always reacting to things that happen around. Mm. Um, but also, um, if I'm if I feel challenged as a leader, it means that there's a skill set that I just don't have yet. Mm. That's how I break it down, right? Mm. Um, 
so also definitely being able to educate yourself on on whatever field that that you're you're going into, right? So um, one of one of the people that I I would say, and I, this is just more recently. I don't. I feel like in the last four or five years, I haven't really had any any real like mentors that I, I lead on lean on right because then the reason part the part of the reason is because like having mentors sometimes you expect too much from them mm. you expect them to solve your problems and you, you it's this it, it sucks to have that feeling like you feel like okay like you're you're supposed to be there for me in the hard times and you know where were you you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. so f for me it's having just educating yourself. Um, so I, I, I do a lot of, um, I'll call it reading. Well, I do audio reading, but, you know, mm. so like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, um, also more recently, Myron, Myron Golden. Um, a lot of his seminars online are, have been really useful because they align with things biblically, which is important, right? So... Yeah. The other thing I was going to say is like, I mean, the Bible is a great place for reference, especially when it comes to business um, principles mm. or like wealth building principles, you know, or like relationship building. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of great sources of of uh, knowledge to grow because whatever you there's nothing new under the sun, whatever you're going through, someone's been through it before. Um, I just think that sometimes you, we all look look for it in the wrong places. Mm. Mm. Top, top. You don't follow. Um, yeah, okay. Talk, talking about places. Um, one thing, like we we know w what you do, and um, um, from from your words at the beginning, it, it, it looks like you know you have been you have lived extensively in the West. I don't know, maybe in the States or in Canada, you know, I know that. But yeah, um, yeah. if if you could share with us, like, where did you grow up? You know, what schools, you know, yeah. Yeah, so I I kind of grew up everywhere. So <laughs> I, this because my dad, the nature of my father's job, he worked in the in the foreign service. You know how they, yeah. they post every four years. So, um. I, I would I would say it's an unstable life, but it's it's a life where you're always moving, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I was I was born in the UK, moved moved down from the UK when I was five to Ghana, lived in Ghana for about four years. Um, during that time, schools I was going to, um, Jack and Jill, mm -hmm. which is still around right now, and mm -hmm. then also I went to Lincoln for, I believe, one year at the time. And then after that, I, I moved to South, South Africa with my family wow. for about a year. And then we got reposted to, to New York. So New York is kind of pretty much where I spent most of my teenage and young, young adult mm -hmm. life before I, I went to um, university mm -hmm. in Canada. Oh, okay. Um, but what, I mean, with New York, the New York is interesting because New York has been probably the probably the most uh, consistent home I've had since I was like you know, you know, a, a young kid. Yeah. Um, and no matter what, it, things always bring me back over there. You know, so I, I I consider it my my first home. Even though I don't I, I don't live you know I live in Toronto, but I still consider it my first home. Um, and a big part of the the business has has grown in in New York. But even before that, like my my whole, you know, like kind of my 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 day ones from like high school and everything. Like it's it's just a place that really, um, really empower empowers people. Mm. Dope, dope, dope. Mm. The conversation we we're having before you've spoken about your faith yeah. in a subtle way, but you've mentioned it a few times and. I'm trying to, you, you, you're not a typical Ghana boy who grew up in, our society is a very religious place. Mm -hmm. um, but what tends to happen when parents raise their children in the diaspora, especially in the West, mm -hmm. is their influence, religion's influence on their lives 
it wanes as they get older. But even more so in the corporate kind of life where you're an indus you're in, in industry and you're right. looking at competition, you're looking at numbers and people are using all kinds of measuring sticks. Like they're using game theory as a philosophy or they're listening to the order of the day, the new school like kind of exec who's leaning the Steve Jobs route or mm -hmm. is a spiritualist in a different kind of way. They don't like to acknowledge a supreme being or it's more or more more atheist or agnostic than mm -hmm. it is theist. I'm hearing you're leaning on that aspect of yourself, your faith, to navigate business. And it is not spoken about enough, but right. it's also, it tends to feel strange in the era and space that we're living in. So I was hoping that you can shed a little bit more light on where that comes from mm -hmm. and why you're confident in expressing that as mm -hmm. your leadership style and what you're leaning on to, you know, to grow the company and make it successful. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I don't force my beliefs on anybody in any way. Um, and I know what you mean by the fact that like when a lot of Ghanaians go to to North America in the corporate world or whatever, that does wane. Um, but as an entrepreneur, you you need all the faith you can get, you know, because the um, there's just a lot of circumstances as a business owner where you are out of control, and that's a very hard place to be, especially when like for for my business specifically, we have to deal with a lot of logistics, like where things have to get to certain places by a certain time or it you know or it's you know whether it's an event or whatever so i've just over over the years uh, i've just exercised my i call them my faith my faith muscles right because there are a lot of situations where um like you you have no control over what what happens so you have to lean lean on lean, lean on on god to get you through it, you know? Um, and I think that w to what you're saying about um, people who go into certain corporate rooms where they have a different skin color and that affects the outcome, um, I think that there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, if you just, just look at the, the numbers for, just compare black owned businesses that are financed to other, other races, and it's clear that um, there isn't a clear distribution within the black community. So, having no backing from the world means that you have to you have to lean on something else, right? Um, mm -hmm. And for me, it's 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 leaning on my faith to get me through a lot of things. And it is, I mean, I'm not afraid to say it's it's my 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 source of confidence because at the end of the day. Um, Someone, people are always going to let you down, right? Um, I've met a lot of people in the industry who are extremely successful and really, really good at what they, what they do. But at the end of the day, they're not, they're not God. They can't, you know, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go as far as to say back in the day, there were, there were certain celebrities that I would look up to, right? I think not just me. There's a lot of people who looked up, look, looked up to a lot of celebrities. You, you see it when they when certain celebrities come to Ghana, like yeah. the reception they get, it's mm -hmm. almost like we're almost like we're worshiping them, right? Yeah. And now that a lot of things are being exposed about how, like you know, a lot of these celebrities are not innocent, and the things that they do, I, I'm, I, it just makes me want to kind of take a bigger stand because um, I'm, it's not in alignment with 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 the way I live my life, right? Um, and I, I wouldn't compromise that for, for anything. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Just for yeah. clout or whatever. Right? It's it's a harder route to take though, you know, because yeah, um, yeah it, it just is. Dope, dope. Yeah. But, I mean, a little bit, just to pull you in a little bit more. Uh -huh. Do, so there's two parts of my mind when it comes to faith. I, I'm, a, I'm a person of faith. Right. But, there's a part of my mind that when I'm, I'm dealing with my work and my business mm -hmm. where I'm trying to be surgical and I find that the places that my shortcomings come in 
Like, with, I, I just give you a, a fast example. In mm. Ghana, for instance, most business owners that are Ghanaian tend to complain about how the local workers respond to them and how they manage them. Systems are not in place, yada, mm. yada. And you find foreigners who come in, like the Chinese or whoever, right. foreigners come in, and they seem to have a system in place, management in place, those kinds of things. And sometimes I'm caught between figuring out is it completely up to leveling up competency-wise and knowing exactly how to run an organization, put a system in place, hire the right people, and make it all run a, like a well-oiled machine? And that's what I'm missing. That's not allowing me to be as progressive. And therefore, some investor looking into my company forensically to investigate whether I'm worth investing in or not makes a decision based on that. Is that what I should completely align with? Or is it an extra layer where, okay, my faith comes in, I'm like, okay, I'm not quite there yet. I'm determined, I'm hardworking, and I'm pushing, but I'm not, the door is not being opened. And should I believe that is simply because of the fact that I'm a Ghanaian and therefore they're not giving me a chance? Because that does exist too. People are prejudiced mm -hmm. and all of that. Right. So I try to straddle that line and I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm I'm torn sometimes because I'm like, okay, I, I know I need to level up, but I know there's also this thing where these people don't mess with me because or they don't fuck with me because I am this or I am that. And I don't know how your experience with it has been and how you... Um. So I've been, I've been fortunate. You know, I keep saying that because like, a lot of, I mean, just our our very first customers. A lot of them were not black. Yeah. Before, like, Bolton became a brand that was known within, you know, the North American, African American communities. Um, we were a lot. There was it was a lot of Caucasian people that were supporting us, right? Mm. So I can't say, oh, I haven't, you know, I think I think what we're talking more so about is on on the corporate level, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're actually in the industry and you're doing these deals that can make or break you, right? Okay. And from that lens, especially when it comes to like investors and everything, like that there is definitely, you, you definitely have to have a spiritual alignment with the person that you're going into business with. Because, mm. and I mean, I'm just learning this now versus before where it's just like, okay, like, are you gonna write me a check? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But now it's <laughs> I, I've I've just seen so many horror stories about um people getting the wrong investor, right? Um, and things going south. So I think that yes, you, you definitely have to straddle the line, but you also can't this it can't be on either ends of the extreme. It can't be one, the one end of the extreme is, okay, like, you know, um, they're just not giving me the chance, I'm doing everything I need to do, right? It's, that's where the educational aspect comes in, right? Because there's, there's nothing, the, everything that is out there, you can learn, and mm -hmm. you, can, you can figure out a system for it to work, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I, I would say that there, there are definitely no excuses, but you also don't want to be taken advantage of, right? So you just need to, when, um, when, you, when, when, you, when, you, when you get that opportunity, you need to, need to make sure that you're prepared for it. And by me prepared for it means that you've done all your homework you need to do mm. so that, of course, you make sure that it's aligned spiritually, but also um, you make sure that your business is in the right place. Because a lot of times, we just need to get our shit together, yeah. you know? And I mean, we don't talk about that enough either. The fact that a lot of um, minority-owned businesses just need better structuring. It's not always about, oh, who's gonna, who's, who, who's gonna give me money, right? Yeah. And that's, I think that's one of the things that I'm, I'm challenging myself with right now, where it's like, the easy route is always trying to get more money but it becomes addic addictive. Mm -hmm. If you're always raising, and every time you raise, your circumstances are gonna get worse and worse, right? Mm -hmm. so, that's, so, so that's the place where you have to be, when I say self-sustained, I mean also have faith that God 
because God is an, an abundant God. He's not a limiting God, right? So if we're not limited, then I mean, frankly, we shouldn't cry about when people don't come and invest in, because then you become a slave to that whole narrative mm. of, or mm. that becomes the reason why you don't do what you're supposed to do because this person didn't give you a chance. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Dope, dope. Um, um, I, I want to go back on collaborations. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke about like the artists that um, you have worked with earlier on in, in this in this discussion in this conversation. Um, I want to ask about the product itself. Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward, or have you done any collaborations like to design and all that? You know how quite recently, not every recently, yeah, but recently, you know, we see two top brands come together to. To like to like build some, some something is, is, is it is it is this something that you have done or so, something that you've lo you are looking forward to between two like fashion brands yeah 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 it, it could be it could be a, a top a top star coming coming to the, the design a frame for you guys yeah so you mean so on yeah so yeah. the you know we've had a, a lot of different talks with different people um who we wanted to do capsules for a lot of times, the things that uh, the ladies things is really who's paying for the project, right? Um, and you just have to ensure that because what, what we're bringing to the table is the expertise on how to produce the glasses. Like yeah. we will, we, we literally bring your ideas to life. But on the flip side, if we also have to fit the bill for the production and the marketing costs, then it becomes a, it becomes exhausting, right? Yeah. But there are times where artists won't won't want to touch anything. They won't want to invest any money. Yeah. They, will, they they just want to use, put the stamp on it, and make money off it, right? Because mm. I mean, most artists are, they're just used to getting the checks from, you know, yeah. the corporate. So, um, it hasn't happened yet in terms of two brands outside of like corporate. But corporate doesn't count. I don't think I don't think corporate counts because corporate. Is this a machine, yeah. right? It's still cool that we were able to co-produce, but we would love to do, we would love to co-produce something f uh, with uh, either a brand or an artist. Mm. We're just uh, we're waiting for the right opportunity. But we have been in, in talks with a lot of artists in in Ghana and also other places too. Yeah. Cool. Dope. Dope. Um, yeah. My last question, now you can, you can come in. So there are, we all have dreams, right? Like for, uh -huh. for this podcast, I have like dreams of maybe some top person listening to this podcast and, and mm -hmm. seeing how dope, you know, it is. Right. And, and I'm sure that you have the same for, for your brand. I'm going to give you five names. Okay. Right. And um, no, not five names, like five, you know, sectors. Mm -hmm. Right. And you mentioned who you think you want to wear your brand from 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 you know that sector okay okay so a sportsman wait are you going to name the people or no I no no like like someone from sports anybody from any oh, okay yeah, okay yeah, yeah. um yeah, sports steph curry <laughs> oh wow really wow okay wow never ever never ever thought um okay tech tech um <laughs> i guess Elon Musk? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, art. And when, when I say art, music, um, painting, architecture, you know. Mm. Okay, art, one person. Uh, this one's a tough one. because <laughs> I would say right now, one person that, like, and I, I mean, I've already made it kind of clear to them mm. or to his manager, um, mm. would love to do a... a uh, sunglass line of King Promise. Oh, I think dope, it'll be really dope, successful. Dope, dope, mm. dope. And I actually like this because I thought you weren't going to mention anyone from here, anyone from Ghana. Oh, so, no. Nah, yeah, so, nah. yeah, this, this is dope. Fred, do, do, do you have the last last two? two oh, for, the, for, for the sector that... Yeah, yeah. Um, academia. Academia? Oh, man, I feel like... Wait, academia in the world or... Academia? In the world, yeah, anyway. It's, um, academia, academia. I feel like I don't know anyone in academia that has influenced mm, my yeah, life. Fair. Yeah, um, that's fine. 
I can switch it. Let's go to politics. Politics, yeah, yeah. Oh, politics? Oh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a tough one, especially right now. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, traditionally, I would say, I probably would say Obama, but mm. now I don't even know anymore, man. Like, COVID, COVID <laughs> changed everything for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I understand that. I think yeah. Obama also changed for me in ways that we haven't had a chance to discuss with you. Okay, so let me come up with something else. Maybe. Uh, well, he gave you the shot of arts, and I involved people in the movies. But let's let's narrow it down to maybe people in 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 acting. Okay, so acting right now, and all these are like I'm I, I'm kind of speaking all these in, into the existence. existence. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, for acting, it would definitely be Lupita. Mm. Oh, yeah. dope, dope, I love dope. Lupita. You yeah, know, yeah, she gets dope. a lot of flack from people. I love. I think dope. she's gorgeous. Oh yeah, too. like who, who gives her a flag for what? I don't know. Every time I see her online, people are just ragging her like she's <laughs> this or she's basically mm. talking about her looks. Lupita, leave the white boys alone. Come and teach me. Okay? <laughs> but, I love you. But I knew for some reason I knew that you were going to say Elon. Yeah, yeah, I knew, yeah. I knew, I knew, I knew that you were, you were going to say Elon. He's the most yeah. cutting edge. Uh, I think, sort of like icon. In, in a business space now. Yeah. After we lost Steve Jobs, mm. I think he... F yeah. I wouldn't say yeah. he filled the shoes, but he, re he he became the other thing to look yeah. at. Yeah, for, I mean, are there, are there any tech ones in, in Africa that mm. you guys can think of? Because it's... A guys in tech? tech? Yeah. yeah. People in oh, tech. Oh, it's, it's mainly Silicon, Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Silicon. Chai. So I, I wanted you to... Talk a little bit more about what you keep. You use that phrase "win lose, win lose." What what you mean by that? For those who may not be catching on to the extent of what you're trying to say, is that it's a win lose situation. So because yeah. we all heard win win, lose lose. Right. I've never heard somebody put that together in a sentence that way, like win lose situation. Yeah. So um, when you're in business, you know you get presented different opportunities. Yeah. And sometimes with these opportunities, the other party will present it as, oh, like, we're doing you a favor. Like, you need to take this deal. But in hindsight, um, they are doing themselves a favor, right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. Meaning that they're, they, they look out for their own business interests, right? Yeah. And if you don't look out for your, your own business interests over time, it will, it will hurt your business, right? Yeah. So... You see this a lot in in like uh, big box. When I say big box, I mean department stores in like mm. you know North America or wherever, where they because they have the big brand, they can dictate your terms of everything, right? Mm. And if you are a small brand, you don't really have much negotiation power, mm. right? Um, but that's very different from if it's let's just say it's a brand that's local that yeah. has presence. Um, but they just decide that, you know, we're not going to pay for anything, any brands in Ghana up front because, because we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's for me that I, that's, that's probably the one I have the bigger problem with, right? Because ultimately, um, with a, with a company like Nordstrom, mm. the rules are the same for everybody, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, so it just refers to ensuring that your um, your interests are served yeah. in every <coughs> transaction that you you have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dope. Um, um, for me personally, um, I hope that your brand will be well known in Ghana because the sun is getting hotter. Especially Ooh. like mm. for me, the sun is getting hotter. That's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Any any time I wear my specs, my yeah, and my, sunglasses. Yeah, my the, my, the, my sunglasses. Right. I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. Look, I just take it off. I just and I'm like, wow, the sun is actually thick. It's 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 actually you know crazy. Yeah. So for me, I I I, I really really want your brand, your brand to flourish here in Ghana because of the weather, you know. And I and I hope that you guys are working towards that on that front. Um, I'm, I'm a big buff when it comes to, you know, um, experiences. Mm -hmm. I want to know how you felt when you first saw someone, let's say, I'm in New York or in Ghana, 
wearing your brand? Like you were walking by and you saw them wearing your brand. How did you, did you feel? Has it ever ha happen, happened? It's happened mm -hmm. quite a few times in quite a few cities, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, one time, I believe, one time it was in New York and like he was wearing one of the last pairs for that, that style. And um, it felt, I mean, it felt surreal. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, like, you know, this, this was just an idea a couple years ago a couple of years ago and now look how far far it's come you know so it felt like wow like this is it felt like a, a, you made it more it was like a you made it moment yeah, i made yeah, it moment yeah. you know um and uh yeah it's it, it definitely it's def, it definitely adds inspiration to to keep going who are you listening to oh who am i listening to right now yeah. um I'm listening to a lot of amp, amp piano music. Mm. Um, um, I'm listening to some Burner Boy. Mm. I'm listening to both both Kendrick Kendrick and Drake yeah. as well. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. in no in no order. That's yeah. And oh, I'm, I'm listening to Thames as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, Thames is dope. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, it's been it, dope. Yeah, I I think we've we've learned a lot and we mm. focus on more of a s serious subject matter but you mentioned that you have a family now and you're settled down yeah i, I want to know for s your position leading an organization how do you make time for fun especially now that a family is involved like what do you do like, in you mean like personal fun or like fun fun of family you know, fun with family and your, your personal life fun like balance but, how, yeah, yeah. how do you yeah um it's it's tough I, I i spend a lot of time with family when i'm not when i'm not working um in terms of like going out um i used to go out a lot when i was like in my 20s so i never feel like i'm missing anything because mm. you've seen it all <laughs> i've seen i've seen <laughs> yeah. it i've seen most of it i've i've kind of i've i've, I've been there done that but um uh, on occasion where like you know the right person is is going out or someone I know that I vibe with is going out, um, I'll I'll tag along, you know. So that doesn't happen often. Maybe maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this though: um, you meet a lot of Ghana's creative industry out late night. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where a lot of the the networking and the, and the relationship building happens yeah. mm -hmm. after midnight. Yeah. But what, what, with your family, though, do you mm -hmm. do anything for fun? Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 do a lot of exploring. We've been to um, the the Legon Botanical Gardens mm. a few times. Do a lot of swimming. Um, you know, play centers. I mean, my kids are super young, uh, okay. four and one. Oh wow! So play center, play centers, and and and, and stuff like that. Mm. Cool. But like, I mean, I'll say this also. Um, Ghana needs a lot more things for, for young families to do. Yeah, activities Charlie. though. Charlie. Me, me, I've Either given you're up. going out to eat or you're going out to eat. I've given up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've given up. I, I, I've, yeah. I've actually given up. Um, do, you have any, do you have any kids? Yeah, yeah. I have, I have kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, know, you know the oh, story. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. Give up. Yeah. Give up. Um, yeah, so Charlie, after every... Um, after we release every episode, I have at least one or two people come to me to tell me how they they are inspired, you know, yeah. by the kind of conversation that we've had. And and yes. I'm already feeling this. You yes, know. yes, yes, you, yes, 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 yes. You have showered us with so much info that I know that someone out there, an, an upcoming, you yeah, know, for person sure. out there should be, you know, inspired and take one, one, one or two from this, Charlie. Nana, Nana B, Nana, Nana, Nana Boati on Sechai, we thank you for coming through the podcast. Yeah, nice. Thanks for having us. This was a great yeah. conversation. Yeah. And if I can say this about you two real quick before Mutombo mm -hmm. ends, rounds off. I think for young Ghanaian entrepreneurs who are building like fashion brands or anything creative, I think this gentleman is one to take very seriously and forensically study him and follow <laughs> him yeah because forensically it, it, it's no joke to build i swear a business anywhere 
but also a business that meets Western standards, which means world standards. Yeah. And it's respected to the level that is kudos to you, man. Charlie, like, you Charlie. make us proud. Yeah. Every time no, I hear no the brand. No joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Every time I hear the brand, I'm like, he did it, man. Like, mm. we're in there. We're in stores. We're in places where we're not relegated to. No offense, but, you know, if our sister local house doesn't support us, we can't go anywhere because, yeah, your label is not labeled properly printed the mm. price is somewhere else yeah. but you've done it at the level where yeah. we all can say you can find you in stores mm. all over the world and kudos to that it's, it's mm. makes it's a source of pride for me and i'm sure for a lot of people yeah. well. hey, i think everybody has a, the um potential to do it you know and i think i'll say this last thing yeah. um whoever invests in ghana's e-commerce um industry is is gonna is, is gonna see the next big boom over here charlie yeah that's a tip yeah that's a tip charlie yeah and love it yeah so mm. just keep that in mind yeah. Yeah. awesome thanks man charlie All right. guys charlie yeah um, charlie you know the usual anthem try subscribe you know share with your family you know let people see this episode you know comment help us, comment engagement comment, help us grow and yeah. by doing that you are enabling us to churn out more dope episodes like this one the if more let's divide podcast fred yes sir we are through oh, oh yeah